And uh, not really, it comes naturally. It's been, um, do you have to have edge in your real life to make what we call edgy movies? Um, well, let's see. I mean, I will say that, like, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's more maybe just where your mind is. Um, but, you know, in the beginning part of when I made movies, I probably was, like, living. Yes, I mean, you said two houses burned down, your teeth fell out. So you're obviously, right. it's different than that today. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, definitely have like a wife and a kid and stuff. So, but <laughs> but do you say being like that when you were young helped? Well, like the, the thing is, it, it, like life experience helped, or like like I don't really. But when I said I wanted to quit making films, I think it was because like also I think because when you make movies and you keep making movies, your life just becomes about knowing about movies or just about films and. I didn't want my my films to be based on other films or other people's stories. It was always very important for me to be able to have a life that's lived and um, and a, a kind of authenticity or, or some type of something that's more experience experience oriented. Um, and so I, I never felt like faking it. And so you know, I I definitely went to those places. I put myself out there. And also, you know, at some point I didn't even know if I wanted, I had made movies since I was a kid and I didn't know if I wanted to keep making films. I would just mow somebody's yard or something, I'll be happy, you know, to do that. But uh, um, I think it helps, I think that all experience helps. And I think that part of the problem with directors and writers is that they become so corporatized. And so everything is about other things, about other books, about other clips that have been made about uh, other things that other people have done. So I just don't never have, for me, I'm not saying it's wrong for everyone, I just never had interest in that. I just wanted to do my own thing. So, you know, yeah, it was pretty extreme. Uh, well, so did you steal Meryl Streep's pocket book? I, I've done once. Yeah. I'm not judging. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, those years are hazy. <laughs> hey, what did you get? A credit card? I don't even remember. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's possible. <laughs> uh, if it was there, you know, at that time in my life, it could have happened. But the, I, I will say it probably didn't happen like what he said. How yeah, said I don't know what he said, but I just thought the idea was right. there. Yeah. Um, I like the idea. Uh, and bad yeah. reviews, certainly, I built a career on bad reviews. Did yeah. bad reviews help you? I mean, when John and Nazar called me, the worst film of the year, that's yeah. all. Yeah, I remember uh, Herzog called me because it was like in the days when uh, it was all. Like it, even, that was my first movie I directed. I was like 22 or 23 or something. And like, it was the day when uh, fax machines. You know, fax machines, and you wake up and there'd be like people would just faxing your reviews and stuff. And like, yeah, it'd just be like all on the floor and shit. And I just walk in and I was like, all right, that was all right. And then I saw like the one that said like the worst movie of the year. And I remember thinking like, damn, some poor son of a bitch. Like. Uh, and I was like, what the fuck, that's my movie. And, like, <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, holy shit, and I read it, and I was like, it didn't even sound like she actually sat through the, the film. And I was like, that was a year, like, Eight Heads and a Duffel Bag came out. And I was like, I was like whoa. And then Herzog, Her, Herzog called me, and, and he was cracking up. And he was like, this is the best thing that has ever happened. So like, in 10 years, you will understand it. And then he just hung up the phone. <laughs> So he, he was like, on the box. Yeah. Um, I was like, uh, you know, well, I was high probably, but I was like, uh, also, uh, yeah, I was pissed off because, um, you know, she just seemed, uh, I wasn't, like, I don't, honestly, in the truth, and this is the truth, I, I don't ever, I don't fight reviews or good or bad. I don't accept, I don't think about, I don't like, I honestly want people to enjoy the film. And to, and to uh, understand them in some way, and to get something from them. But I don't think that there's, a, for me, there's no right or wrong way to interpret the films. Uh, I make films that invite that. But the but what sucked was that she had a lot of power at that time, this is pre-internet and stuff, and so it made the film almost, uh, they think they put it out in like five theaters or something after that. So, so you true. didn't feel shame that Roger Ebert you. <laughs> you could face the <laughs> Right, right, right. No, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, Roger was supportive. Well, 
it seems like Herzog has really been like a mentor to you in a way, right from the beginning, right? And you've yeah. your own films. And... Yeah, he was. I mean, even as a kid, like, we're, like um, we're talking about, uh, Ed was talking about Strozak. I mean, that was a, a huge movie for me. My dad showed it to me when I was, uh, I don't know, uh, 12 or something. And uh, it was just like so, so devastating for me, that film. And then uh, I remember watching Even Borg Start Small, and I just couldn't, I'm mean, like a science fiction, I can imagine how that even came to exist, you know? And uh, and then he was like a really early supporter, just like even before, I think someone had uh, shown him an early screening of Gummel, and I just got a phone call from him, and he was like, you're the last foot soldier.